Hi there. My name is Nikki. I'm a technical evangelist at AWS, and I'm joined by Nate. We are here at AWS Reinforce, AWS's first security-focused conference. And today we're going to be talking to Nate a little bit about incident response and forensics. Um, yep. Before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at AWS? So I'm a security specialist. I generally spend my time. Specialist. Security specialist. It's Sounds special. very important. Actually, I'm a senior security specialist. Oh my god, it's even, even more better. important. I know, come on. So no, I, I get to spend a lot of my time doing incident response for our customers and spending time with them when they've had an incident occur in their application. So generally that means that someone's done something, something's happened to the app they didn't expect to. Someone's made an oops. Yeah, things get posted to GitHub, Slack gets posted, something like that, and then we have to go in and help them figure it out. Uh, okay, so some of the most common examples are going to be like accidental oh, good. credential yeah. leak on GitHub. Credential leaks on GitHub are like the most common the thing. The most yeah. common thing. Um, and so what happens like when an incident occurs? Like what, what actions does the customer take to remedy the incident? How do you assist with that? So the best choice for most of our customers is always to call support. Um, support, support takes care of 90-something percent of the incidents that occur. And to be fair, like when it actually comes to me, it's one of those things where it's a customer that's having issues. So it's even gone beyond just we've posted. So it's like larger than the yeah. breach. It's, what it's, kind of issues are we <laughs> talking about? Um, a couple of interesting things would be things like uh, we've posted our stuff to GitHub and we don't know what people have gotten to see, what they haven't seen. Do we have a data leak? Well, I mean, how would have? you know that at that well, point? Well, there's a lot of questions. I mean, we have to look through logs. We have to look through CloudTrail. There's a lot of S3 bucket looking, you know, all of that. There's lots of places to look. We just have to make sure we use a lot of those detective services that AWS has to figure that out. So there's guard duty, there's CloudTrail, there's VPC flow, there's S3 bucket logs. And that's beyond customer support because customer support can't yeah. be helping you look no. into those places to see what happened. Generally, they don't know, and they end up calling us, and then we come in and help, and we try to make the, a bad day better. Okay, so like, what is the funniest or most entertaining story of a, <laughs> of a breach from a customer, of a um, customer that you assisted? So I think the funniest one was the admin 123. The what? Admin 123. Admin 123, so what happened? You'd be surprised how often we have someone that calls up and says, hey, we have a breach. We go out and we look at it. We figure out what's going on. And it turns out someone just used something simple like admin 123 as a password. And <laughs> that okay, was the password? I get that it's like, you know, 1990 something when people started doing that. But, you know, it's been a while. And uh -huh. yeah, maybe we should stop doing that. Yeah. But, you know. Is one of those so that's things. like on an IAM user possibly, and they didn't set like password security on IAM users, and then they had a very simple password and it got hacked. Yeah, the one I'm thinking about was actually a database, and the database had admin as the username and admin123 oh, as the password. That's painful. Yes, it really is. I mean, you get to that point, and it's just like, well, did you like just post that and figure out it was going to happen? Because, okay. So how did you get this customer back on their feed, and then like, was all the data like lost at that point or hacked? Um, were you able to like recover that data, put them back into a good track with a yeah. better password? Well, that's really, <laughs> with a better password. Um, that's really what we like to do. I mean, when that happens, obviously bad things have occurred. There's no getting around it. In yeah. this case, it was a development system, so they didn't actually lose anything that was scary. Okay, right? so it was, so really it was a, a development database. Yeah. So just like for testing. Yeah, but it was a really good learning procedure for everybody, right? So they got to go through an incident without actually having to deal with That's amazing. the pain and suffering of, oh my God, my stuff is out of the internet. They're right? very lucky. Yeah, they really were. So we got to the end of that, and all of a sudden we were able to sit down with them and say, okay, so obviously admin 123 isn't the, isn't the goal. Nope, that, that should not be a, a password that you use. But we're going to go ahead and set up some of these other architectural things that maybe we're going to look at security in the pipeline and security of the pipeline. We're going to start looking at pushing security back down the development stack. Got it. And we're going to look at having your application secure to begin with in development and then run it through everything else. So it never even gets to that point. So we don't have to worry about that. We've built events in depth. Everything's there. You're good. We've got the ability to protect you from soup to nuts, as it were. And you also mentioned that like password 123 isn't going to yes. work either. <laughs> okay, password just is, clarifying, because yeah, that one okay. also is not yes. going to work. We're going to use Secrets Manager. You're going to rotate your passwords. You're never going to know your passwords from Great. forward. Great, beautiful. Yeah. And you're going to encrypt your secrets. It would be good to encrypt things, yes. Encrypting things is not a bad <laughs> thing, yes. So how do you help customers prevent a breach like this? Or what are some things customers can do or services that they can set up yeah. to prevent this from ever happening? Well, so I'm going to argue that you can't prevent it from ever happening. Like The concept that it's never right. going to happen is kind of one of the things that we have to deal with, because the reality is nobody wants to be that person. Nobody wants to be that target. But 
by also, the end. Nobody of, wants to be the person that accidentally made the password, password admin, admin one, one two three. three. <laughs> like, There's someone oh. somewhere going, oh my god. Um, yeah. But the reality is that when we look at this, we have to assume that we will be breached. It will happen. We will deal with it, and it's it's okay. And I think one of the things that kind of has happened recently is we start looking at all of these people that have data breaches. And if you've actually planned for the breach, you've built your application with kind of incident response in mind, it's OK. It's so remediation rules every, and such. Well, that, but even going to the point, like you said, with encryption. Maybe we have each row encrypted with a different key. Maybe we're doing different things so that we're keeping that privacy secure and we're not letting people into that database to begin with. Or if they do get in, they can't do anything with the data anyway. So it doesn't matter. Or maybe the data in that database isn't something that we're concerned about. Right. There's a lot of really funny stories about um, menu applications and whatnot that actually use the employee's social security numbers. As menu? The, at, like restaurant menu? Yeah, like a rest, well, like for a, for a company like a cafeteria or some such. OK. So they'll actually let the employees come and get something at the cafeteria, and they use your employee ID as the way you pay, right? Because we're just going to dock But that. your employee ID is your social security number? But this employee ID is with social security number. It's getting worse. Nah, you know, it is one of those things. So you get to the end of that, and well, what did they learn? Well, you, you can't just use the employee database because you want to have you know, some sort of a, a menu app. Or maybe you shouldn't make the employee ID the social security <laughs> number, and you should have a well, different yeah. quid for your employee ID. There is ID. always that, yeah. But it's amazing to me how often people do things because it's just simple. Like, yeah. if, if you're the database that this developer is connecting to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm banging away on the keyboard and I'm going to look at you and go, what information do you have? Oh, I need the user's name. So I'm going to go ahead and use that database because it's easy and it's right there. Yeah. No, I, I know. I mean, I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm a developer. I've made mistakes. In fact, actually, I, I hear you have uh, written some code to fix one of my most common mistakes. When I first became a developer, I definitely made the mistake of checking in uh, secrets and keys and all sorts of things to GitHub and uh, get, definitely got myself into trouble, especially with AWS. <laughs> um, so you wrote some code, I heard, to prevent that from happening. So actually, Henrik wrote the code. Oh, Henrik so you Johansson. posted it. Well, Henrik Johansson has a GitHub that actually has this uh, Git secrets in it. And that's one of the things that we talked about originally that would let you keep that safe. Um, I wrote some simple code based on his code that will actually let you protect that in the build process. So when you start building out your application, it'll look through your application as it's going by and say, yeah, that's an Amazon secret. You, should, you shouldn't have that in there. So we'll make sure that the link to this code is in the description below um, so that you can use this code. I know I'm gonna definitely going to check it out. <laughs> Even though I do not make this mistake anymore, no, I feel like not. it's a really good piece of code to have um, to prevent you from accidentally doing it. Maybe you forgot what you were doing that morning. To be fair, a lot of the time it's a Friday afternoon. The developer gets really tired. They want to do one last post right before they leave. And there it is. And I get to talk to them on Monday morning. Boom, done. Yeah. What happened over the weekend? Well, a lot of people spun up ECQ yeah, crypto mining was of the big excellent. one, biggest yeah. kind on my AWS account. Um, so tell me about forensics when it comes to computers. Like, I'm familiar with forensics with like criminal events, or you hear about forensics when you watch like Law and Order and like and shows like that. Um, but what does it mean in the context of, of software and hardware? Well, I, I was going to say, you had talked up originally about being interested in this. So I, I, think, I when, think it's fascinating. Yeah, it's great stuff. And Law and Order is a really neat show. I am obsessed. Yeah. But it doesn't really work that way. No, I'm very aware. <laughs> so, yeah, I wish. <laughs> However, but, it is largely yeah, entertaining. So. It is. It is. It is. So when we look at something like this, we tend to try to focus on what happened. So we're looking at copying all the logs. We're looking at making sure that we understand who did what, when, and why. Um, for me and Got what it. we so do. something happened. Right. And it's not a criminal event. Like, no one died, thank God. <clears throat> well, <laughs> hopefully no one died. Nikki hacked But we are looking at, you know, how did this occur? Did somebody get into the system? Yeah. Who hacked it? What did they look at? Where did they go? What did, an audit of sort of like, where did they go? What was their yeah. path? We're going to follow them through CloudTrail. We're going to watch what they did in CloudTrail. We might look at them through VCP, VPC flow logs and figure out where they actually entered from. What we honestly see quite often is that somebody did something simple like a USB in the parking lot. And then you know they pick like up the left a USB. Yeah, just a simple USB uh. drive in the parking lot. We're going to plug it into our laptop and see what's on our cute little USB. I'm going to infect your laptop. And then through your laptop, I'm going to push up to the cloud. And it's interesting. They don't really bother to go through the cloud as much anymore because they know that that part's secure. They end up going through the employees that are doing the, the things on the ground. Eek. So yeah, sorry. Need to protect my laptop. <laughs> um, so I, you, you preempted one of my questions. So you mentioned a few AWS services that we can use for forensics, mm -hmm. CloudTrail. 
I think you said VPC flow. VPC flow. Um, is there anything fantastic. else? Athena's that you great. Could use? Yeah, we love Athena. Athena. Um, we use Athena all the time. Um, not necessarily an AWS service, but Prowler and Scout 2. Also, really good open source products out there. Uh, right now, we're using GuardDuty, Macy, and Inspector quite a bit. And if you guys don't know, Security Hub just came out. Yeah, Big deal. so Security Hub did launch. Uh, can you tell us what that is for those that are not aware? So Security Hub's a really cool thing that will go ahead and take all of your logs, kind of concatenate them into one place, and start making findings that you would have gotten from Guard Duty anyway, and put them inside of Windows. But it, it can you. aggregate well, that's you know, the cool alerts part. from Guard Duty, and Macy, and Inspector. That's where it gets really interesting. So now we're not just looking at Guard Duty, like, you know, okay, it's Guard Duty. We're getting all of these things, and we're lining them up, and we're starting to do what we call insights into the different things that actually occur there. And so you could almost use that for forensics if you're just, like, at the surface level starting out and trying to Maybe, not alerts. necessarily. Well, yeah, okay, fair enough. Of like where you could start the following things. Yeah, you could start doing a little bit of threat hunting there and start looking through what happens. Maybe it's like a starting point of yeah, like yeah, yeah. your um, target acquisition. Inquiry. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Really interesting. So, where can our customers go to learn more about? Um, how they can secure their systems and prevent an incident from happening or a breach. Well, we always have well architected. Um, yep. if it's always out there. You can get your SA to come and review your application, and he or she will take a look at what you've got. And you don't want out. Nate coming to review your oh, app, though, because um, very nice. By the time he gets there, something bad has happened. No, no, no. I'm I'm very nice. And to be fair, I would rather be there beforehand. One of the best things to do with incident response is get there today, as opposed to the day you actually need me like that. But yeah, we, we're happy to come out and take a look. I'm messing with you. Okay. <laughs> that was not serious at all. <laughs> um, beyond that then, obviously we have a lot of different services that we offer as far as professional services and whatnot too. And I think you also told me that there was an awesome white paper online that There is that a white paper that Josh, Josh Dulac and I actually just published a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's online under our white paper section and it's just incident response and best practices. We'll make sure to also put that link in the description as well so you guys Appreciate have it. it. Is there anything else you want our customers to know before we wrap here about incident response, forensics, or security in general? Preparation is worth a thousand, everything else that happens on the day of. I mean, it really is. There's really no scale to how much better things are if we deal with things before there's an incident. So if we can sit down and talk with you, we'd love to sit down and talk with you. It's always free. I mean, the SAs are happy to come out and talk to you about what's going on in your application. We'll take a look, do a well-architected review with you, and talk to you about incident response. That's awesome. Sounds like there's so many resources and help for you to help you secure your application and prevent an incident or a breach, um, or accidentally releasing your credentials on GitHub like me. Don't do that. <laughs> you don't want to do it. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Nate, for joining me in this, uh, this session on incident response and forensics. We'll see you guys later. Bye.